What's going on, everybody? This is Randall Barnes, the founder of HBCU Pulse and the host of HBCU Pulse Radio on Sirius XM in the building for another review of College Hill Celebrity Edition, Season 2, Episode 5. And man, twas the night before the Amber and Jocelyn fight because that's coming up next episode. I'm once again late. I needed a College Hill break because I just did a series of four or five interviews with members of the season three and season four cast. We talked to Ray Cunningham. We talked to Rodney. We talked to Bianca and we talked to Willie Mack. And we had an amazing interview with Crystal Lee that you all need to go check out. It will be airing on our Sirius XM program on this Friday. And it's going to be perfect because on Thursday, you're going to have the big fight and altercation between Amber and Jocelyn that has been bubbling up subtly this whole entire season so you can get a lot of perspective on what happened with crystal and how she dealt with the altercation in college hill versus now in season four and really just the contrast between how jocelyn's been handling it because she's been going around on drink champs on instagram live on twitter talking about how she beat folks up and how it's so great and how oh she's the woman is two totally different parallels but i'm not gonna be here too long i want to just talk about a few things because there wasn't really a lot to talk about this episode outside of them just still completing their midterms like we saw that ray j and the crew made it to class for the act midterms it was really fun and really hilarious as i expected i said in the trailer reaction that i knew that that acting class was going to be the class it was going to be a bunch of hijinks and ray j as well as parker should have eaten that class up and i'm pretty sure they did i think in the acting class they have nothing to worry about i think they all did a phenomenal job in the civil rights course I was very proud of all of them. Jocelyn did an amazing job finding someone and you had everyone that just really connected with the history in a way that I think is amazing. And I've said in all these recaps that I believe it's great how the BET College Hill producers interwove in really serious topics that maybe some of the viewers that are watching that aren't familiar with black history, that aren't familiar with HBC history and how adjacent it is to black history and the civil rights struggle. It might encourage them to go look at the deeper history of the Black Panthers. It might encourage them to go to a museum such as the Legacy Museum. So I think it's really beautiful how BET laid out the history and the knowledge and made it palatable where folks watching might want to check it out. So I thought that that was amazing. Now, I can't speak on French because I didn't do all that well in French. When I was at my HBCU, Fort Valley State University, I did enough to get by because I was taught that C's get degrees. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so like I didn't do all that great in French. So I'm not going to judge because y'all might judge me if I start trying to speak French out here. So I think that they did pretty good and i think they're gonna get good grades in that the african-american literature class jesus christ tiffany is a character like i wonder if tiffany really thinks she can sing because tiffany was trying to harmonize tiffany thought she ate that thing up and everybody was in there laughing like i honestly wonder like does tiffany really think she can sing it was something else but i want to hit on a couple of key moments within the episode so speaking of tiffany it's interesting to see the dichotomy of Tiffany because sometimes it's hard to believe that she's really emoting and that she's really feeling a way about what has been said or what's happening or if she's just putting on a show because we saw her get into it with Ray J. We saw that she has a very sensitive moment and spot when it comes to education because she seems to legitimately believe that she's not gonna pass and that she's gonna fail. I really think that's an anxiety that she was dealing with during the filming of the show. And I wonder if Tiffany really thinks she's not smart because my recollection of Tiffany uh, in Flavor of Love and I Love New York and my interactions with her on reality TV as I was growing up is that this woman is very intelligent. Like she's especially socially intelligent because she was able to outmaneuver everyone to get to where she needed to be in Flavor of Love. So like she's very articulate. Like I just think that she plays a character. Like I don't think she's not smart. I think she's intelligent and articulate. So I wonder where that comes from and i know there's so many other things going on and we're going to see the jocelyn amber confrontation take things over but maybe as we reach episode 10 and get to the end of this season we'll see more of tiffany opening up 
to why she feels that way and feels unconfident about her ability to learn and also regurgitate that information in class. Because I think, honestly, she's doing pretty good. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Tiffany messed around and got valedictorian. Because I think, outside of her singing, I think that Tiffany, Quay, Orion, Parker, I think that all of them have a legitimate shot of making it to be the valedictorian, just like our Frida was last year. It was really a two-person race last year with Frida and Slim. So I can really see that being something that occurs this season, but you're going to have four people that's jockeying for it, in my opinion. So I thought that that was interesting to see that, and she had that moment with Ray, and Ray and and uh, Ray and Tiffany, they are interesting, and it's so crazy because they're a part of my childhood. Because I used to watch reality TV when I was a child. It was For the Love of Ray J. And it was I Love New York when I was growing up, like 2007, 2008, 2009. I should not have been watching those shows. But it's just so crazy to the young person inside of me to see Ray J and Tiffany interacting. So shout out to New York, shout out to Ray J, right? So we see Parker and Quay at the Magic City Classic. And like I said before... If y'all don't know, the Magic City Classic is the biggest classic in America. 60, 70,000 people that go to the Magic City Classic. And I would encourage y'all to go to the Magic City Classic. I need to go. So I would encourage y'all after seeing this, y'all should pull up. You might be in traffic for a long time, but I'm telling you, when it comes to an HBCU classic or an HBCU homecoming or an HBCU function, it is definitely worth it because it's going to be a memory no matter what. So we saw Quay and Parker perform, and they did not do all that bad, but Parker was freaking out, and you have no idea how much I love Parker. She is so relatable and i don't dance either so i wouldn't get out there and dance with the dance team that's not what i do that's not who i am all right i'll talk to you i'll host something i'll do a, a radio show a podcast but dancing ain't my thing but parker had a lot of courage getting out there knowing that she's not ordinarily a dancer i think that that shows a lot of courage and i thought it was real when she was getting you know like talked to and they were trying to pepper up and say hey you can do this i think that dance coach who we didn't get her name but I think she did an amazing job. And I thought what really brought it home is when she told Parker, listen, you're a stingette. We got you. You're one of us. You're a stingette. I thought that that was amazing because I think that Parker hearing that really made her understand, I got this. I'm doing this. And I just want to say once again, as someone that's really in this student leadership thing that knows how things go on. Parker and Quay and Tiffany, who did a great job as well. Tiffany probably did the best out of all three of them. Like, honestly, this is a blessing because you're not going to have the regular non-celebrity traditional student that goes up and says, hey, I want to be a stingette, and they don't try out. And then they get the dance coach saying, listen, you're a stingette. So that is a blessing that I hope the celebrities still carry with them. I hope that's a moment and an experience that Parker and Quay and New York, I hope that they still carry that with them because your traditional student at Alabama State or your traditional student at Fort Valley or Albany or FAMU, we can't do that. I can't walk up to the Blue Machine Marching Band and say, hey, I want to be a drum major. I want to perform at, at the Fountain City Classic. I can't do that. They'll laugh at me and tell me to get the blank on. So listen, it must be good to be a celebrity, man. So I hope that they really cherish that. But one thing that I did see is that they tried and they put a lot of work in. And New York put a lot of work in. Shout out to Tiffany. She put a lot of work in because we didn't get the opportunity to really see the practice that she underwent because we were so focused on Quay and Parker because I think that that's where a lot of the drama was coming from, especially from Parker's side, but New York killed it. Shout out to her. And I peeped what Orion said. Orion said that thing about, man, like she can do, you know what I mean? And then we saw that the tension between Orion and New York is getting real thick. Like, it was getting real thick. Like, that Ray J valedictorian line was high-key hilarious. Ray J still got it. That man is like, he's golden on TV. I'm not going to hold you. Uh, but I want to see where this New York Orion thing goes because I think that we're going to have to wait until maybe episode seven once we resolve what happens with Jocelyn, 
you know, and Amber. We're going to see what happens with them. I think that's when we'll see something transpire between Mr. Orion Bronner and Miss Tiffany New York Pollard. We're going to see what happens with that. And Ray J said the same thing we all are thinking. Like, New York is doing this, and she has a fiancé at home that she talked about and said that when something racial happens, when a racial reckoning happens in this country, police brutality, all, all these different things that happens, she can't look at her fiance in the face. So she already dealing with the, by, the, the, the byproduct of that. So now she on here flirt with Orion, Lord have mercy, help him. All right. I just want to just say that like, it's going to get really interesting. We're not going to get a chance to breathe as we go into the rest of this season. So Parker and Amber opened up about um, being of biracial heritage and growing up biracial and sort of, you know, grasping to find, you know, where they fit in in the grand scheme of the culture. And we see that Parker acquiesced a little bit better than amber amber was out talking to orion as well as ray j about how she was perceived to be too black for her white friends too white for her black friends and that was an interesting dichotomy especially when it came to relationships because when she wanted to listen to rap and she's around like a white person that she was trying to date she really wasn't getting a lot of good vibes from that person because they wanted to listen to something else sometimes. But then when she was around a black, a black guy, she was trying to date a black guy and she wants to listen to heavy metal and all these different things. They're not relating to that. So I understand that level of the identity crisis that Amber has gone through. And like I said, I'm not a therapist. I'm just a casual observer and I'm a writer. So I am naturally inquisitive. And that seems as if that's the reason for a lot of why Amber feels the way that she feels about religion, what goes into her trauma, what makes her feel the way that she feels, why she's guarded. Her racial identity and her grappling with that said identity, I believe that that is the answer to a lot. And what we see, and this is where I'm gonna leave us, because I, I'm gonna have a lot to say come Thursday when this episode comes out, is that is the reason why Jocelyn and Amber got to fight. And I didn't want to see it because even Amber, this episode was emoting. She was opening up more and more and more. And it seems as if as we get through the season, Amber becomes more comfortable in her truth and comfortable saying how she feels. And we see her loosen up a little bit. But of course, we see at the end of this episode, the seeds have been planted. They're outside and they're on the ox cord and then Amber's playing heavy metal and you got Jocelyn that doesn't want to hear that. Jocelyn just came back. She didn't even go to the Magic City Classic if that was how it was sequenced. If this was after the Magic City Classic, like, man, we see Jocelyn didn't even go and she comes back and she once again is on bully time and she says to Amber, man, no one wants to hear that. And then Quay is like, well, wait a minute. Like she's trying, he's trying to stand up for Amber and Amber says nothing. Quay feels a way about it. He goes off on Amber, which was the wrong thing to do. Amber is hurt. She leaves. We don't really know where she goes, but that leads right into the altercation. And what we see in the preview, and this is, you know, the most that we've seen since we saw the trailer and also the screen capture of them locking up and getting into that fight is that Amber, they were in the African-American literature class talking about race. And then you see Jocelyn listening and all of a sudden she hops out and tries to characterize Amber about her experience. And it's like I said, I'm probably the only person that's doing recaps that's doing reviews, that's making their opinion vocal about College Hill, that is saying that I don't like this because I know it's entertainment. Folks are ready for it. Oh, we're so ready for the fight who won, but I just don't like it because I felt as if both of them were breaking through. And I think that if Jocelyn did get kicked out and Jocelyn didn't make it to the end of the season, it is unfortunate because I believe that Jocelyn was doing such an amazing job. I believe Jocelyn could have very well have been top of the class. Like Jocelyn, after she had the rough first one and a half, two episodes, like Jocelyn came back and she was on it. She was doing her thing. 
outside of that moment she skipped class. But even still, like she could have skipped class. That was fine because she was going to class. She was doing the work. I think Jocelyn's midterm grade is going to be really good. But then this happens. Like I just, it, it doesn't sit right with me especially with Amber opening up and being so forthcoming about what's been bothering her. We found out about her being an atheist. Then we find out about like how she feels about how she sexualizes herself. She talked about it in the last episode. She talked about how she sexualizes herself and how she wants to reclaim the perception that other folks put on her. So now she's talking about her racial identity and how that really shapes the way that she feels about herself and it shapes her identity and her experience. And then Jocelyn's attacking her for it. And we know from that first episode when her and Orion were talking that that's a sore spot for her. So I don't like that. I'm pretty sure Amber, you know, recovered just fine. She got the check. She on another TV show, what have you. But it to me, as someone that is watching this, it just does not sit right with me. But that's all I'm going to say, because we're going to talk about it next week. And this episode, it wasn't too much to report. It was some hijinks. New York and Orion are getting close. Ray J is still being Ray J, but it seems as if he's being way more serious. And everyone is doing a really great job at their schoolwork. But of course, we're going to get the drama. And I think that we're going to see a definitive shift in the energy of the show and even the energy of the house moving forward. But that's it for me. That is my college Hill season two episode five review. Make sure to follow HBCU polls on Instagram and YouTube at HBCU polls, Twitter and TikTok, the HBCU polls. Make sure to listen to HBCU pulse radio on Sirius XM channel 142 HBCU. We are going to be talking to crystal Lee from college Hill Virgin islands. She talks about her experience on college Hill, including the parts of her altercation with Vanessa that you didn't think about because we got really deep on that and the effects it had on her mental health as well as her personal life after College Hill. You do not want to miss that. And if you don't listen to it on SiriusXM, you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Odyssey, wherever you get your podcasts, just type in HBCU Pulse Radio. And of course, last but not least, if you want to donate to HBCU Pulse for all the amazing work that we're doing, make sure to cash up us at dollar sign HBCU Pulse or paypal.me slash HBCU Pulse. Any amount is amazing and it will help us out tremendously but outside of that thank you so much for tuning in and as always we'll see you on the other side and i'll catch you on our next review of college hill celebrity edition like what you hear uh, yeah subscribe to hbcu pulse radio on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you get your podcasts also head to hbcupulse.com to stay up to date on what's going on in the hbcu community thank, thank you, you for, for listening, listening to hbcu, HBCU pulse, pulse radio, radio.